This is Vincent Van Gogh's Night Cafe. You might see some similarities between it and the bedroom that he painted. It's bright, vibrant, alive, awake, filled with detail, and ready for your eyes to explore. This is another view that Van Gogh painted of his chair. This chair was kind of meant to describe him and his personality. It's an ordinary chair. It has his tobacco that he uses on sitting on the chair. And the room that it sits in is pretty basic as well. This is an example of some rooms with chairs that some students have done. You can see there's a lot of variation, but each one has an interesting floor, an interesting background, and the style of the chairs all are just a little bit different. So when you're designing your space, you're going to be drawing some detail about what is in that room. Here's some examples of rooms that have some basic details and furniture, like shelving and hanging lights and flooring. Here's another illustration of someone's room that has details like the blinds and even the window opener, the alarm clock. The molding that goes between the wall and the ceiling. This room features a table, shelves, television, a painting. So remember that to start our room, we fold the paper in half, touching the corners and then pushing back to crease. Once you've folded your room, you're going to use a straight edge to draw equal length lines in the back of your artwork. By drawing straight equal lines, the furniture that you make will be straight. This is about one inch by one inch, and that will become my chair. Straight snizzers make a nice straight snip. These are two different 3D components that I will be building into my room, a small one and a large one. I can fold them up before I open them up to pop them out. So here I'm building a third component to my room. I'm going to use a straight edge to fold on my lines that I drew. And what I'm folding right there is the tab that will stick it down to the floor. And up at the top is a bigger tab that will stick it to the wall and give it some support. So you'll see I'll be gluing that to the wall and the tab down to the floor. But before that, I'm going to color it. And this will be a human figure that I'm adding to be propped up and glued right to the front of that middle tab. So your first job is to start creating your design or at least laying out where things are going to be lightly with pencil. Once you've got your pencil all finished, you'll add some color. We have various colored pencils and markers that you can use for this. Do your best coloring, filling in the spaces evenly and solidly. We're also going to have a lot of detail to color while it's flat on the sides and on the bottom. 
One technique I use is to draw some detail and then color evenly and smoothly over that. That's how I do my floor. Here I am paper clipping and storing for later all of my pieces because I haven't glued them in, but I want to keep working on them. Name and class code. So the last step is to go over and pen so that all of your details pop out. And here I am, now that everything is all done being colored, I can glue in my components. Gluing takes a lot of glue and then pressing and holding for at least 15 seconds. I'm really pressing hard and I'm waiting and counting to glue that flap into place. I held it upright to decide where I was going to glue my bottom and now I'm pressing and gluing in the figure so that it's stuck to that tab that's sticking out in the middle. Pressing and holding for a long time is important with glue. So this is the step that you'll do at the end where you are covering your holes. I'm folding my piece of paper. And then I'll be gluing around the outside of those holes and back to glue it into place. Here's my daughter doing the same thing for her photo booth. She is going to glue with her glue stick around the outside of that hole that she's made. And then she's going to line up that extra piece of paper behind there. And she'll be able to see where it connects. When she turns it around, she presses and holds. She actually decided to draw something on it before she added it in. So whenever I'm folding something, I'm using a straight edge that helps me make a nice crease. This is an example of how you could glue a wall onto the back so that you can flap it open and closed if you want to do that. There was a few people that were interested in the side wall. I'd be gluing it on the back but leaving it flappable. And there's the finished room.